Hey guys, DPG again, and thank you as always for following and watching and sharing and all the nice things you do for me, and hopefully you will get something uh, nice from me. And today what I want to talk about is uh, another type of training. I, I already created a video on Sanford Meisner, Meisner training. And now I want to talk a little bit about a type of training that I'm actually not intimately familiar with, but I know enough about it, I think, to explain it to somebody considering uh, whether this is for them or not. And that is the training of Lee Strasberg. And just a little historical perspective, um, you know, there's sort of three people that are commonly referred to as, you know, method teachers or the modern acting method. And um, that is that is Lee Strasberg, Sanford Meisner, and Stella Adler. The three of them went to Russia to learn about this new acting technique that was being taught by um, a guy named Stanislavski. And uh, he's a Russian. He, they actually went to Russia and they wanted to hear what he had to say because it was very different from the Indi English style, which was um, known as external acting, I guess you'd call it, or indicating, indicative acting, where, you know, rather than actually having emotions, you would just demonstrate that you have emotions. So if you, you would read the script and it would seem like you should be angry here, so the, you would therefore make your, you would behave angrily, okay? Wouldn't be any necessarily real emotion, theoretically. And Again, it's a very fine line between, well, I'm acting angry and um, I'm letting myself be angry based on a situation that isn't real anyway. So regardless of whether you decide ahead of time I'm going to be angry or you say, I'm just going to trust myself and respond to this person in the moment and be angry, it's still fake, okay? It's still indicative, it's still external because you know it's fake, you know it's not real because if it wasn't fake or real, theoretically it would escalate into, you know, blows. Like it, it would, you know, who would say, takes a gun and shoots or stabs or punches or whatever and obviously actors know that it's fake so you can't just hit people or kiss them or whatever whenever you want. Um, okay, so it's all fake, it's all acting, it's pretend, okay, regardless of, but this is a this is a new style that came out of um, the work of Stanislavski, and these three uh, teachers, you know, um, went and they studied Stanislavski. Then they came back and they formed a theater. I can't. It's like the New Theater or Circle in the Square. I don't know. There's all these New York based theaters. Theaters. They went off into the Poconos or you know the Catskills in New York, and they worked on this and they workshopped it. And then at some point, they diverged in opinions and. They each went their separate ways, you know. They said, I'm taking my ball, I'm going home. So Stella Adler, Elise Strasberg, and Sanford Meisner developed their own techniques, which were all basically trying to interpret what Stanislavski had done and theoretically maybe also adding their own components to it through teaching classes. Um, and uh, so let's get back to Lee Strasberg. Lee Strasberg, um, he made the term sense memory famous. Okay, so let's just say, in a nutshell, Lee Strasberg and The Method, as he really sort of came to own that title, um, taught that the actor should use their past experiences and relate them to the experiences in the material they are working on and studying, and um, then switch them. like transfer the emotion, you would say, well, uh, in this scene, I'm getting a divorce. Now, if you haven't had a divorce, try to imagine what a divorce would be like. And do you have any, um, uh, you know, experiences in your own life that you could substitute for that to create the emotion of it? And they, they spend a lot of time in relaxation and basically faking stuff, like really, really powerful imagination work. You know, um, I actually did a few classes and I've had plenty of friends study it and I've heard it described by people who have taken it. So, you know, initially you did, we did an exercise called um, the morning beverage, right? So that's when you wake up, you would 
be looking in the mirror and you would be holding um, a real mug or, a, or not holding a mug at all. Again, it's imaginary, so it doesn't really matter if you have an actual uh, prop or if you don't, but you would you know, imagine smelling your morning coffee and the emotion that conveys and what does that mean for the beginning of your day and, you know, things like that. And, and you would also, um, you, you get command of your imagination. So you are making situations as real as possible without them really existing. So you would try to imagine, okay, you know, this scene takes place in a forest, so I'm going to imagine myself in the forest. And you would try to establish as much detail as possible. Like, what's the temperature? Is the sun out? What time of it, the day is it? You know, is the sun coming through the trees at, you know, uh, just above the horizon or is it directly overhead, which casts shadows, might make me squint? There's so many details that you can come up with. Um, and the problem is that uh, the audience isn't necessarily privy to all these details. So a lot of what you do could confuse the shit out of people because they're like, why is he squinting, right? Because I'm just saying squinting because I would if I'm walking through the forest and, you know, as you pass by trees, it's going to go shadow, light, shadow, light. <laughs> and, you know, most actors would never even think of that. But that really, if you want to create a world of truth, that that's there. And But if it's not written, then, you know, do you imagine what's not written, right? And this is a, this is a big problem I have with it is, like, how do you actually know? I mean, they tell you to imagine a scenario and imagine all the detail. Okay, so if I'm going to do that, then... I'm going to go there. I'm, I, can, I can close my eyes and imagine that I'm in the woods and I'm going to look at all the leaves and there's individual leaves, there's roots, there's stumps. Um, I might see a squirrel, it might catch my attention. Um, the light, you know, the sun, it could be raining, it could be cold. What's the weather? What's the time of year? Am I thinking about Christmas? Am I th thinking about my son's birthday? I could create a whole world. It's a never ending um, set of possibilities. But the audience is only privy to what's written on the page, right? Um, at least, well, at first it's written on the page. So if you're an actor, you're reading what's on the page. And it doesn't say any of that stuff, right? It doesn't say roots and f leaves. It just says, in a forest. You know, might tell you the time of year, but doesn't tell you the weather because any weather can happen basically at any time of year. So there's a lot of problems with imagining it. And what you're imagining may not be what the audience has been given. And so you're doing something that the audience isn't actually aware of. And that's confusing, right? That will cause distraction and confusion, which is death. That's death to any scene in any project. So there's a problem. Um, the second thing is, uh, you know, transferring or substituting emotions based on memories. Um, I mean, so many problems with that, right? People's memories suck. People's memories suck. If you've ever seen in a courtroom, they used to take eyewitness testimony and they just assumed that if somebody saw something, they would remember it perfectly and what they would say would be exactly what they saw. And what we have learned from DNA is that people see all kinds of wacky stuff and they either remember things that didn't happen or they don't remember things that did happen. Uh, either <laughs> things they did, they don't remember, and things other people did, they don't remember. And their, um, their trustworthiness is very, very small. Like what they say... Uh, even the way they say things, we hear them differently than how they are thinking they are sounding. Okay, so there's a lot of problem with this whole interpretation, right? So you're talking about substituting an emotion that may, uh, well, first of all, okay, let's just say you've got something comparable. Say you're imagining the death of a child. Well, most people have never encountered that, have no idea what it would be like. What's the closest thing? Maybe you've had the death of a parent, the death of a friend, the death of somebody. So that causes some emotion. Yeah, okay. Is that the same emotion as the death of a child? You know, I don't know. I have no idea. I don't think it is. I'm not even gonna, everybody's gonna feel differently about that. Did you like your kid? Did you really love your kid? You know, and are you, are you emotive in the first place or are you not? There's just like so many problems. And now you're taking this thing and you're just going to go, okay, this is how I feel about the death of my uh, friend. Now I'm going to transfer that emotion so that when it says, when the doctor says your child is dead, I am going to imagine, now imagine my friend is dead. <laughs> oh, okay. So I'm substituting the name and all this stuff. It gets very complex, right? So that's 
that's one of the major problems is the complexity of it and the not sameness of the emotions that you're substituting. How can one thing be possibly be the way another thing was? Because they're not. Just like you are unique and that's why you will always book jobs that other people won't book because you're unique. Um, every, sub every situation is unique in, in, in its timing, in who you were at that time. So how you feel about losing your friend 10 years ago is probably not how you're gonna feel about losing your child today. So there's just got a, a whole set of problems that goes with it. Um, and you can imagine the amount of work that goes into this. You need to get the material very, very far in advance to spend this kind of time to work on it. And I think that is um, the inherent problem with a lot of this work that is being taught today is it assumes that you are basically working on a play where you have weeks and weeks to work on this work and then the play is going to run maybe for years because that's how long plays run on Broadway and you can continue to work on this stuff you know like you're going to be on some long-running sitcom or long-running drama like Law and Order and if you look at you know Liv from Law and Order now and you look at what she was doing 20 years ago it's completely different um, because she's been working on that character for 20 years but most of us don't have that luxury because most of the time how you're going to do it and how they assume you're going to do it is based on what you can put together with this material that you have had for a matter of hours. And most of that time is, you don't have the time to think about substituting all of these emotions. You've just got to sort of get a rough idea of what the story is and then sort of turn yourself over to it the best way you can. Because, and this is a huge one, and this is really, I think, where a lot of these teachers went wrong, is they forget that they're in modern film making, modern entertainment, which is largely, you know, digitized or filmized, uh, you know, it's shot in a vacuum, right? It's, it's shot on a soundstage and um, even on a location. And there are so many tools at the disposal of everybody else that the actor um, forgets they're not as important as they once were, or they're not as important as they are maybe in a stage production where there's not as many tools at the disposal of the directors and the producers, right? Like a black box theater, basically it's all up to the actor. You've got a few boxes to sit on. That's your couch, your table, your car, whatever. It's fake, right? So you have to bring more of that imagination work. But in the case of uh, a TV uh, or uh, TV show or a movie, basically you just have to show up and say the lines um, fairly honestly, you know, like it just has to fit into the situation and it fits into how you're being spoken to and all the other facts that, you know, the audience is going to know about you. That's the main thing that you fit into the world the audience is aware of. Everything else is irrelevant, right? And this world has been created by the directors and the producers, okay? So it doesn't matter what you think. It only matters what they've created. And you have to look around and go, okay, well, I read the script and it was one thing. And now I'm sitting here and it's something completely different. And I've had these experiences, okay, where... You know, I'm a news producer. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking of an X-Men movie I was in, and I have to show up, and I'm directing, you know, uh, a news segment, and it's at the UN. And everything that I had sort of imagined, because you, you, you kind of have to put facts together based on what you're reading and what they give you, but then often what they gave you doesn't match what suddenly you're doing. And you just got to make an instant adjustment to that, and you have no choice in the matter because the facts are now different. So... Now you just have to learn to just go, okay, whatever you're telling me right now, I just have to accept it. I can't go, yeah, but it says here, and I did all this emotional work, and I've substituted, blah, blah, blah. You don't get to do any of that, right? Um, unless maybe you're Al Pacino, and you say, this is how I work, and if you want me in your movie, I will say how much time I need, okay? I mean, look, I hope you get there, but most of us are not there, and we never will. It's going to be somebody else's um, nickel, right? It's going to be somebody else's uh, nut, <laughs> and you're just going to have to go with it or just don't do this or make your own movies, which some people do so they can make these calls. But anyway, so Sanford Meisner really relies on a lot of work that I would expect you could maybe get in the theater, but you still have to audition and you don't get the chance to read the material that much before you have to audition. So at the end of the day, you're going to audition based on what you can put together in a fairly short amount of time. Then if they like you in a general sense, they feel like you're the right vibe, then you can really do your um, deep work with all your sense memory and substitutions. 
and relaxation, and you can start to apply that work to the performances. But then if you start doing something radically different from what you did at the audition, I don't know how the producers and the directors will feel about that, right? Because like, I thought we hired this person, now we're getting this, that person. You know, there's a lot of stuff to think about there. So um, again, those are the, in the, the inherent problems are the whole substitution idea in the first place. I don't know how that works. If you're young and haven't had a million experiences, even if you're old, you haven't had most of these experiences. Um, and so how do you substitute something that you've never experienced? You can't, obviously, you just have to imagine. So you're left back to imagination again. And really what you need to learn to do is have access to your emotions that you can then uh, reproduce empathetically or sympathetically, okay? Meaning you feel for that other person, you feel for the situation, you feel for yourself in that situation, and that will allow you to develop and, uh, and demonstrate whatever emotion um, comes from your imagination of the situation. Okay, so that's, that's kind of the nutshell, is, is the substitution problem and the fact that you will never have enough time with the material to sort of perform this circus act and, and do it to the extent that theoretically um, Lee Strasberg was promoting. Because all of this stuff was done in a laboratory, in a sort of workshop setting that would last weeks and weeks and months, in fact, years. They worked on this stuff for years. I don't think they ever stopped to think, can I do this quickly, within a few minutes or a few hours or whatever? Can I just read something and trust my instincts based on all this training? I don't know. You know, I don't think they thought that through. Um, and so people that really rely on this um, and people that claim it's amazing, I think, have been offered the or extended the luxury of, of having a lot of time to prepare like the Bradley Coopers and the Jennifer Lawrence's I don't know if they necessarily practice method acting the way Lee Strasberg taught it but they get lots and lots of time and they make those demands I need the script this far in advance or whatever and they can do that um, all right so let me know what you think thank you for listening and again as I expressed in my Meisner video what what I really value um, is getting feedback from you guys so if you would take the time to just say something it doesn't have to be super well thought through um, did you like it uh, do you, did any, any questions come from it what what does this do for you based on the training you've had or based on what you know about acting training you know does this make you rethink things a little something just give me something Give me something to let me know that you're listening, you're paying attention, and this means something to you so that you would like me to do more work like this. And I will talk to you soon.